Welcome to Your Next Stop. This is Juliette Hahn. I am a wife, mom, virtual coach, public speaker, and crazy obsessed dog lover. I am so honored to be able to take you into the life of someone that has followed a passion. Every week, I hope you are as inspired as I am. Welcome to Your Next Stop. Hey guys, so welcome to your next stop with Juliet Hahn. This is a really exciting guest for me because I have known her for many, many years through a mutual friend and I've watched her grow what she is doing and I cannot wait for you guys to hear the story because it is super exciting. So welcome, Liza. How are you? I'm doing great, Juliet. Thank you so much for having me on your show and it, you're doing so well. I'm just thrilled to be a guest on your show and I'm so happy for you. Thank you so much. And you know, it's funny because as I said, we've known like each other. I mean, we've maybe been in each other's presence a handful of times, you know, at bachelor parties, about not bachelor, but bachelor at parties and I'm um, just, you know, our city days, but I've seen where you have started. So I really can't wait for you to tell, you know, to tell my listeners your story because you are empowered, like exactly what you have done is what this podcast is about. It's about empowering the individual to follow their dreams and just go even when it's scary and to like follow a passion and make it into something. So I cannot wait for you to get into the whole episode. So I'm so excited for you to be here. Thank you. So, okay. So Liza, tell us, and I want you to go back because you have a pretty interesting story to go back. And then where you are now is just, uh, and I can't wait to like kind of relive it. Cause I know some of it, I don't know all of us, obviously. So, um, go ahead. So you want to go way back? Way back. So, you know, I started right out of college on a soap opera on Passions on NBC, which was, you know, like 10 of the most fun years of my life. And I met you shortly before that when we were all in college. And um, yes, being an actress was always something I wanted to do. And when I got the role on Passions, it was just so exciting and so fun. And uh, it was a blast. But Like halfway through, you know, three quarters of the way through my run, I thought, okay, yeah, the money's great. Yeah, we're having a good time, but I didn't feel fulfilled and like I was giving back in any way. And um, life kind of dropped this situation in my lap, which is when Brendan, who's now 12, um, he was born nine weeks premature and was in the NICU for for six weeks and i realized this is going to be a real turning point for me i didn't feel comfortable going back to work in the traditional sense and was super super lucky to have you know a spouse who can support the family while i took time off to be with brendan and royce at that time was only about 16 or 17 months old so um i decided to stay home uh you know, Brendan needed me in, in a whole different way. You know, he needed right. me for, for more than, than comfort. He needed me for survival. And once he came, came home from the NICU and was stable and he was about six months old, I had started to um, have this idea, you know, for, for, for really developing sage spoonfuls. I had had the idea in my head uh, when Royce was born, but because I was working, um, I with at on passions at the time it wasn't really something i thought i had the time or desire to fulfill and then when brendan was born i thought okay this is my game changer and i don't think i want to go back to work in the traditional sense and after he came home and was six months old and stable i thought hmm there's still this really big hole in the market there's no products out there to make feeding your children healthy, you know, baby food easy. And there really wasn't. I mean, we were one of the pioneer brands. And I sat my husband down and I said, you know, unbeknownst to you, I've done hundreds of hours of research. And, you know, he watched me kind of piece together a baby food system when Royce was a baby. Um, And I said, there's still nothing. And I'd like to kind of pursue this. And, um, you know, I got some some angel funding together, primarily from him, which I'm very grateful for. And I took two years to go from concept to creation. Um, and that's really how Sage Spoonfuls was born. Um, I was pregnant with Hayden when I finished my book. And I was highly pregnant with Mason when we launched the product line. And, and really, all four kids had such a big part in it. Like, Royce was kind of the idea. Brendan was, you know, the catalyst and the reason to make the career change. And then uh, 
Hayden, I was forced to be on bed rest um, and finish my book. And then with Mason, it was like, I'm like seven months pregnant. Why not launch a baby <laughs> brand? <laughs> so right. here we are, you know, we're, we're in our eighth year. And what I initially thought was just going to be a recipe book and some storage jars so quickly became this really blossomed into this robust product line that I thought was going to be kind of a cool um, mom owned, maybe boutique brand. And just right out of the gate, five months in, we launched nationwide with Bye Bye Baby. And it was like, okay, here we go. Right. Yeah. And, and I remember, and the thing that was so cool is being someone that, you know, was uh, an acquaintance of yours. It was like so fun to watch what you were doing. Cause obviously I saw you on Passions and it was like, oh, yeah, that's so fun. I know Liza, you know, et cetera. And then to see, you know, with them, that's when we all started having kids, right? So it was like right. we all kind of were having kids at the same time. And I've talked about this to my listeners. I chose to stay home because it was one of those things. I remember my sister and I sitting down and I was going to go back because it was like, okay, women, this is like now everyone's saying, women should do it all. And it was kind of back in those days. And I remember sitting on my deck at the beach, um, talking to a nanny and being like, okay, when I go back to Brooklyn after the summer, I'm going to go back full time and have this nanny. And I just remember not feeling right about it, but everyone's like, oh, you're not going to feel right. It's not going to feel good. That's normal, et cetera. And then, um, but I always wanted to be a stay at home mom. Like I always knew that that was something I wanted to do. I wanted to do that. Uh, I mean, I used to babysit and all that. So I just remember kept thinking, Oh my gosh. And my husband would have supported me either way. We were very fortunate enough that his job could have sustained, you know, the household and I didn't have to go to back to work, but he wanted to support me there. And I remember my sister saying something so profound to me. She said, what will make you the best mom and wife? And I didn't even hesitate. I said, Oh, staying home. And she goes, well, you just answered your question. She was having, she had her baby literally a week before, but her job, she could work one day at a week. And I, I traveled a lot. I, I worked in an altered and advertising. I was in the city and, um, I would have, we were in Brooklyn, but I would have to commute to Manhattan. And so, and then travel. And I was like, how am I going to do this? I just want to stay home with this child. So it was really an interesting journey. And then I stayed home and it, w it was wonderful. And then as they got older, I was like, okay, now I want to go back into the workforce. Now I want to create something. And that's where my whole journey started. So I love that it kind of, that your kids were the ones that you found a passion, right? And so, and, and that you were on passions, which, you know, like, which is kind of funny. And then you made something and you were like, you know what? I really love this. And that your kids were so a part of it, which is so beautiful. I mean, that has to be like such a great feeling. It is. And I'm very much a planner. I like to know what's going to happen. Um, but I think it's so important to leave yourself open to let life surprise you a little bit. Had I remained on my plan, I never would have allowed myself to open up to become an entrepreneur. I mean, had you told me 10 years ago that manufacturing <laughs> would be my true passion, I'd say you were crazy. But I think it's really important that we leave ourselves open because these, I mean, life just happens and things just happen. So I'm, I'm grateful um, to Royce for giving me the idea and Brendan for, you know, kind of being the catalyst to making it happen. Right. And which it's so beautiful. So I know there, so you were in Bye Bye Baby or um, what was it? Was it Bye Bye yeah, Baby? We, five right? months out of the gate, we were nationwide in Bye Bye Baby. Right. And then tell us some other journeys. And, and I would love for you to um, give some tips also like to, to my listeners, like these are the things that I learned that I probably wish I knew before, but like, that's how you learn, right? Failure is one of those things that I always say you have to fail to grow. If you don't fail, you're not growing. And so that's like you, it's scary, but like, you know, take us through a couple of things where you're like, oh my God, that was wrong, but this is what it taught me. If you could do that, I would love to hear that. Definitely. Um, Try to keep your failures as inexpensive as possible. <laughs> I had some <laughs> big financial, you know, look, we, failure is awesome. And, you know, I like to say fail fast and move on. Like, don't hang on to the Titanic. If something is not working, have the guts to like realize it and just move on. Um, right in the beginning, like I said, we launched in Bye Bye Baby Nationwide. And so my first real expensive lesson was do not invest in a suite of retail packaging for your entire 
product line without getting someone's eyeballs on it other than yours and your designers because of course you and your designers are going to think it's the best thing ever and i'll never forget <laughs> being um and back in the day bye bye baby was um headquartered in garden city where we lived so yeah. it was great so we went into the boardroom to present the brand and i had already invested like 30 or 35 thousand dollars in this suite of packaging and you go into the boardroom first and like you set your all your stuff up and everything and then the buyer came in and um someone else very high up and i had two sales reps with me and two hours into the meeting you know she said okay i love you i love your product but i hate your packaging and, oh. I, and I actually started to cry right there in my Bye Bye Baby meeting. I was literally physically crying. And she said, and we laugh about it. We have the same buyer, you know, seven years later. And every time I right. see her, we laugh about that meeting. Um, so my advice would be do not spend so much money on a full suite of packaging. Have your designers make some mock-up boxes and bring those to your meetings and get your buyer feedback or get your customer feedback or, uh, Yeah. So we use those. No, that's, um, a, that's a big one. Yeah, we use them for online sales, but I had to immediately find another 30 grand to redo these boxes. I mean, that's a lot. It's a lot of money regardless. And certainly when you're starting out and not generating much revenue. Right. Oh my gosh, that is, that is a big one. But right, I think that's such an important lesson you said, like, because right, us as creators, we're like, yes. And then when you have a team, your team usually has a lot of your same vision which is important as you grow, but it is also important to have that person that maybe questions you a little bit, right? Like, eh, are you sure? What about this? What about that? And that is yeah, as yeah. an entrepreneur, right? As an entrepreneur, outside sometimes eyes. that's hard. You need outside eyes. Um, and I didn't get it right. that time. And I didn't <laughs> learn my lesson subsequently, but it was expensive. Right, 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 right. Um, okay. So tell us one of your big wins, like something that you, like that you went with and that you were like, oh my God, this was so, and it, you felt it in your gut. Like you really felt it and knew it. Actually, that's something that's happening right now. Um, you may have seen me post about it. We're launching with Pottery Barn Kids, like literally any yes, day. Yes. Oh my God. And <gasps> I'm so excited. Way back when I first launched the brand and was, we were really knee deep in design and realizing, okay, this is going to be more than just a book and storage jars. And as the lines started to come together, I, I thought, wow, this really is so perfect for Pottery Barn Kids. And I was obsessed with Pottery Barn Kids. I had four kids in five and a half years. And I was like, oh. <laughs> so I just, it was always a dream account of mine. And then last summer, summer of 2020, they contacted me. And I almost fell out of my chair and I was so excited. But pitching your physical product, your brand to your dream account via Zoom during a pandemic presents challenges. And I said, oh my gosh, how am I? Because I'm right. used to being more dressed up and in a boardroom with lighting and, you, and they can see, they can see the product and they can you know, touch it and feel it and really understand it. So um, I was in my, well, and I was also by myself. You know, I decided right. you know what? I actually didn't bring anyone from my team on because you really, as kind of the owner and founder, no one is going to be more passionate about your brand than you. And because it was going to be on Zoom, I didn't want the focus to be anywhere other than looking at the product line. Um, Smart. And so I was in my office and I, which was like such a mess all the time, but I like, you know, threw stuff out of the corner and um, set up a nice chair and set up my lights. And I had this little table and I set up, you know, the products that I thought would be good for Pottery Barn Kids. And I, I pitched to them um, in the summer of 2020. Like I was so excited that actually like was knocking my stuff down. But, right, right. you know, you just like, I was like, oh, it's fine. We're all like figuring it out. Like, it's fine. So I just put my heart and soul into it. Um, you know, and then, and then you wait a while, you, 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 I was like, oh gosh, maybe it didn't work out or whatever. But like two months later, I got um, you know an email that it was a go, and oh my god, that's I was so, so excited. excited that I just I kind of just went with my gut, you know. I said, you know, I can do this on my own. I really want to keep focused here instead of like all these different screens on the Zoom. And I just followed my instinct and 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 um, did it with heart and passion, and it worked out. That's so, I mean, that's so amazing because I did I saw that and I remember I think you in the beginning when I decided to to 
pivot my podcast and make it into this, like literally where I'm interviewing people that have followed a passion and made it into a career. You had come into mind and then, you know, as things get busy and then I saw that pop up out of like nowhere and I was like, oh my gosh, I have to reach out to Liza because that is like, I'm so proud of you also because I mean, you're doing this like with, with four kids um, and you're running a life. It's not like, you know, it's, it is hard to do it, but you found something where you're helping other people. You're making mother motherhood and, and food, a more simple thing. Cause I remember I was, you know, really health conscious with my kids. And so I was making all my food and I suck at cooking and I don't like it. I actually just was on a podcast and we were talking about things that we, um, you know, we tell us ourselves that we're not good at, but maybe we are, or we are not good at something and it's okay. And we don't really choose to be better. So I am not good. So I am okay with not being a good cook. I, my husband's a great cook. I am okay with not being a good cook, but I'm very healthy. So that goes like, it's not that I'm, you know, I go out and eat processed foods. I'm just like, my stuff is bland. As my kids say, they're like, oh, it's really to, to taste like nothing because <laughs> I don't add a lot of stuff. Leave it, leave it to them. They're always very honest. Oh, totally. So when I was doing the baby food thing, I remember it was not, it wasn't, it's not easy because it does take time to do it. And so you simplified that process, which is so helpful. And I, I mean, obviously that's why, you know, Pottery Barn and, and Bye Bye Baby, they, they saw that. Like it was like, oh my gosh. And I love that you saw that in the market and just went with it. Thank like, you. so, you know, that is like that, that takes balls. It takes really big balls. I think it's helpful to not know what you're getting into before it gets started. Kind of like totally. childbirth. You just kind of just <laughs> go with it. Um, yeah, you know, you just you just do it. You just do it. And you go with the flow and you believe in yourself. Um, I remember waking up like a shot out of bed around 5 a.m. one morning um, shortly after we, you know, started really working with some major retailers and we were like seven months post launch. And I turned to my husband, I said, Oh my God, did I just like start a brand? You know, cause I thought in my head it was just going to be this small little like boutique <laughs> thing. And, and I said, wow. You know, and I was so like full of anxiety and I was so proud of myself, but also mm -hmm. full of a lot, really a lot of anxiety. And you know, right. it's, the process is all about trusting yourself. And so I just said, you know what? I'm going to be able to get through this. I'm going to be able to figure it out. And I saw a need in the market, you know, because right. I, because not everyone can cook. And the truth is with baby food, you don't even need to be a cook, but a lot of people don't realize that or they think it's very right. time consuming. And I knew that if I felt like this would be helpful as a mom of four kids, I, I bet there are other um, moms, parents, caregivers out there who, who would also think it was helpful. And um, the retailers did see that. Like I said, we were one of the pioneer brands. There was nothing out there um, when we launched eight years ago. Right. Stay tuned for a quick message from my sponsor. Hi, my name is Shari Hodes, and I'm the president of Aura Limited, a proud all-women-owned brand marketing and global sourcing agency. Simply put, we provide fashion-forward swag for any and all of your branding needs. Please visit us at www.auralimitedspelledout.com. And you know, the thing I said, I love, love that you said is that it helps that you don't know exactly what you're getting into. Because I think that is a really big thing. But I also think what you touched on is that you have to believe in yourself and you have to believe in what you're doing. Because if you don't have either of those, it's even if it's a great idea, it's not going to be successful. So the fact that you believed in yourself, you had a support system because you have your husband and then you have a supportive family that are behind you and believing in you, it just helps get it even more. But I love that you said that because it's so true. Because if you like really know what you're getting into, it makes it a little a bit scarier, right? And that whole thing that we talked about failure, I always, I don't like the word failure. I like the word missteps because I think missteps are a really important thing because the more you have missteps, the more you grow. And if you're not having missteps, you're not growing. And I just literally, I talk about this all the time on my podcast. My biggest, like, I guess it's one of my biggest fears is being bored and stagnant in life. I just, I cannot imagine that and I never want to imagine it. So I never let it happen. And so if I am not failing forward or having missteps and like when I do, I'm like, okay, I'm doing something good. Right. I know that this is on to something. And so right. I, I love that you said that, that cause that's so important. Can you talk to us a little bit about how you balanced 
life with four kids and as you created this and you had young young kids super young kids and one with cerebral palsy so it's it was it really um i don't know people do ask people ask women all the time how do you balance everything and once i stopped like trying to do everything at the same time and so giving not a hundred percent to everything um that's when it got better because yeah. i was giving 30 percent here and 30 percent here and 30 like it just and then the work wasn't getting all the way done the kids were not getting the attention they need my husband like god bless him i mean but there was no time for him there was no time for me like and i was working so hard and working in circles um, because I was multitasking so much without ever really giving everything the 100% attention it needed. So for me, as soon as I stopped doing that and segmented my day, so that's how I do it yes. all, segmenting my day. You can do it all, just not all at the same time. So I get up I, really I love. early. Yeah. I get up really early. I work for two hours. Then, you know, for the hour that the kids are getting ready for school, that's for them. Then I'm back to work. I set my five critical goals that I need to get done for the day, not 50 critical goals, just five because it's doable. Right. And, but it moves the needle and keeps me focused, you know, because we're all, all over the place. Um, and then when I pick the kids up from school, I'm with them. Yeah. So then at the end of the day and I get to pick up the kids from school and then I'm with them uh, and then, and just them. And then I have dinner and then, you know, it's time to be with my husband. And then if there's work to catch up on at the end of the day, then I do it then. Uh, because just this, I was working constantly, you know, having the phone in my face, like when it's supposed to be homework time or when it's, I'm supposed to be, you know, cooking dinner with them. And, and I really, that's not the vision I want for them to have in their mind of me is like mom with her phone in her face. And so after a few years of that and feeling like I was really on a treadmill, not getting anywhere, but working so hard, I just stopped I'm doing a hundred percent of this, a hundred percent of this, a hundred percent, like as much as you can by segmenting your day. Right. And I love that you said that because I think, and it's actually a reminder for me too, because as this keeps growing, you're right. I have to like stop because when you're doing, and that's the, one of the things we always say like, oh, you know, there's the whole movement, like women can do it all. Women can do it all. No. And women shouldn't have to do it all. And how you said that was so perfect is that you segmented your day. So you're like, okay, I'm going to do this and then I'm going to do this. And yes, you can do it all, just not at the same time. Exactly. And I think that is so important for my listeners to hear and for people to hear. And even for the man that's listening to this, because them too, you know, like it is, they, you know, when, when a, a, a guy has a, the husband has a job, it is like also people think, okay, well, they are not doing it all because maybe they're not as involved in the kids and stuff. But if you're a, a man that is involved, it's the same thing. You have to kind of segment your day. And so I love that you said that. And it was a, a reminder for me because I was like, you know, I have to be better at that. Because um, as I start growing even more, I need to be conscious of that because that is the one thing, again, bringing back to when my sister said to me, what will make you the best mom and wife? And I was like staying home, but now I am back to work. And so I need to segment it. So thank you for that reminder. I really appreciate it. Well, I remind myself of it every day. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. So what also do you feel that, um, cause there's people out there that might say, um, I can't do that because I don't have a, a husband that can support me or, um, uh, and meaning emotionally, not, not the whole finance thing, because people can figure that out, but like, or they don't have a supportive family unit. What do you say to that woman that's uh, alone or that man that's alone that has an idea? Can you give us like a tip for them to kind of start something if they have something in their mind that they want to start? I truly believe that the main support that you need is yourself because you can have all the support around you in the world, but they're not the ones doing the work. It's nice to have people around you who support you, but they're not going to support you to success. You're going to do the work. You're going to believe in yourself. You're going to support your daily efforts to that success yourself. So it's awesome to have supportive people around you. Um, but you don't have to have it. You can do it on your I own. I love that. You can. Yeah. And it's true. It's, you just have to, you have to believe in yourself and that's the most important. So Liza, can you tell everyone where they can find you? Absolutely. On you can find, um, Sage Spoonfuls. We're on Amazon, Target, Walmart, Bye Bye Baby, um, Amazon, of course, sagespoonfuls.com. Um, and for me at Liza Huber on Instagram. 
And so can you spell all of those? Because anyone, so I, you, and you probably don't even know it, but I'm dyslexic. So I always have everyone spell everything. So uh, if they're like, oh, how do you spell that? I don't know. If you could spell all those so they can find you easily, that would be Absolutely. awesome. And this will be in the show notes as well. Thank you. So Sage Spoonfuls, S-A-G-E-S-P-O-O-N-F-U-L-S. And then Liza Huber, L-I-Z-A-H-U-B-E-R. Okay. And really quickly, how did you come up with Sage Spoonfuls? So initially, the idea was, and again, this is a failure that I'm glad it happened. I was just set on the idea because initial of Mommy's Kitchen. It was going to be Mommy's Kitchen, and that was the name I wanted, Mommy's Kitchen. But the URL wasn't available. This dude in New Jersey like had the name. <laughs> It was hilarious. It was a guy with mommy's kitchen. And um, right. he, he was, and I told him my idea. And I was so passionate and limited funds because I was starting out. And he, he was like, well, I'll let you have it for $8,000. It's like, you uh. can take your $8,000 and shove it. I'll think <laughs> of a different name. And, and a couple nights later at 2 a.m., I'll never forget. I was like, oh, Sage Spoonful. It's like, that was it. And I remember running to the computer and checking the trademark and the URL and like all these things. And it was available. And I stayed up for like six hours just securing the name across the board. And I, I love it. I love it. And, you know, I just got the chills because so when I was coming up with my new brand, it is something that you go and you try to find the URL. So my um, my website is I am Juliet And it's the reason being is Juliet Hahn is a professor. When I first got married, I went to go get that URL because I'm going to do something. You know, I'm going to do something one day. I want, you know, I want that URL. And it was taken by a professor. And so I had to you know, when I decided my brand was going to be me and then underneath it is your next stop and, and my workshop, your next stop. So I went and I was like, okay, it's going to be, I am Juliet Han and we'll do that. But the URL and that stuff, and sometimes people get too hung up on it because there was a couple of names I had that were taken and it was the same thing. The person was like, oh, I'll give it for $8,000. And I'm like, you know, take yeah. your, take your name and shove it up your ass. Yeah. Um, so I totally, I totally get that. Okay. So at the end of each episode, because this used to be called your next, uh, I'm not your next stop. It used to be called next up crazy town. And I have rebranded because now I, these interviews are like, what is dear to my heart. And so I asked ask all my guests, what does crazy town mean to you? Crazy town is my every day. That's it. Like, that's it. Like, I mean, here we're trying to do the interview. I got the dogs here and the, one of my kids is on virtual upstairs and like people need to be picked up all over the place in my mind, you know, so crazy town is my life, but I guess I wouldn't have it any other way. <laughs> I love that. And thank you. That It's so fun for me to ask every guest what their crazy town is, because to me, it's like my energy, my life, my family, my dogs, my husband, you know, like just my immediate family, external family. And so that's why I love when people have the same positive um, outlook on it. So I just have to thank you again for taking the time because I know you're a busy woman and um, for coming here and sharing your stories with my listeners. And I just can't wait to watch you grow even more. And I mean, Liza, it's been such a delight to see you from start to finish and like watch this whole thing kind of blossom. So I am just, I'm, I'm, I'm just beyond excited to have you on and sharing the story. Thank you so much, Juliet. And the same goes here. I am so excited to be watching and continuing to watch your journey as you rise and rise and rise. Thank you so much. Guys, so if you like what you hear, you know what to do. Share, rate, and review. Follow Liza. Follow Sage Spoonfuls because, again, there's someone that you know that's having a child, and it's the perfect gift. It's the perfect gift for yourself if you are in that same um, time because it just makes being a mother that much easier. So don't forget to check us out every week, twice a week, Monday and Wednesday for another inspirational story of how someone followed a passion or hobby and made it into a career. We'll see you guys next week. I hope you liked this episode of Your Next Stop. Please subscribe to my channel, share with your friends and join in each week.